Hello everyone, today I've got a different kind of video than usual. I was super lucky to buy damaged feature pro glasses for super cheap. I've got them for like $40, which is super low price even for broken ones. There was no information about their state apart from couple of pictures, which have shown that the both temples have snapped off. I don't really care about their physical state. I just want to see what's been used inside them and I hope to take out the birdbat modules, since those are super expensive. It's possible that the display modules are working as well, since those are usually well hidden inside the front frame, which looks pretty much intact. The very first thing I've noticed is that those are super similar to the Rocket Max glasses. It may even seem that the one of them might be a clone of the other one. I really like the look of the small logo here. It's super elegant and it has nice contrast with the frame. The front lenses can be scratched and dirty, but for this price I'm not really mad about it. The reflective lenses had been slightly scratched as well, but it doesn't seem like it would impact the image reflection. I've been also using toilet paper to clean them, which may not look like ideal solution. Here you can see how similar the temples are to the Rocket Max ones. Both of them have basically the same shape with only minor changes. Now that we've had some proper look at the glasses, let's tear them down. I expect some super small screws all around. Also I would like to mention that I've never even seen those glasses before, so I most likely won't know how to disassemble them properly. I will try to remove the broken temple pieces first, since it looks like the easiest route to take. Those small pieces near the hinges look like they might fall out any minute. There are also small FFC cables going right through them, so it's safe to assume those are broken as well. I won't be doing any temple disassembly, since I'm more focused on the front frame. Most electronics inside the temples cannot be used for any project, so I will just put them on my shelf. The glasses also don't use any normal connectors like HDMI, so I'm not even able to check if anything works. Next up are those big hinge screws. Those pretty much would hold the temples in place if those were not already broken. One of the screws was super difficult to remove for some reason, like it was bent inside or something. Also it would be a great idea to remove the FFC cables first, but that's impossible to do without praying open the temples. The second hinge screw was pretty easy to remove, I unscrew it and just popped out. I tried to open the temples just to see what's inside them, but it was pretty much impossible to do. I've used super sharp knife pointing directly to myself to do so. I've cut myself so many times that I'm pretty much invulnerable at this point. The front frame on the other side was super easy to open, I just needed to pry open this plastic part here. The plastic is super thin on this piece, so I will just bend it out and break it. I'm of course very careful, so I won't damage any electronics inside. And here is the piece that I've just carefully removed. I will now just as carefully put it away. I can now finally detach the temples from the front frame, since the FFC connectors are now easily accessible. I won't damage the temples any further, since I might have a change of mind in the future and open them up. There are some metal clips inside, which prevent the ribbon cables from disconnecting. It's a simple and clever solution. Most companies use some kind of tape to hold the ribbons in place, but the metal clips are way better since those actually stay in place forever. Once again, I try not to damage anything while doing this, but I really don't care about those temples since those are most likely broken either way. I just can't wait to get the optics and displays. I'd love to simply tear out all of the necessary stuff. Now I'm pretty much left with only the front piece. You can now easily see the optics and the aluminum frame that is holding them. I can tell straight away that the birdbath module is slightly dimmed, which is a good thing because this will make the projected image way more visible. I will now try to remove the front frame to get the even better look at those optics. The frame is being held together with regular screws, which is nice since Rocket for example had both pieces glued together. I've actually cracked one of the front lenses while doing the Rocket Max teardown. One of the bigger surprises there is that the front lenses are actually connected to the main piece with 4-pin FFC cables. This is absolutely the first time I'm seeing something like this, but on the other hand I don't have a lot of experience with commercial AR glasses. 
After disconnecting both connectors, I've come to the conclusion that perhaps the front lenses can be polarized using voltage. Imagine a scenario where you are sitting on the beach and can't clearly see the projected image. You would then reach for the settings on your glasses and adjust the polarization of the lenses, which would make them dimmer and projected image more visible. This theory of course comes directly from my ass, since I never even had those on my head in the first place. The barefoot modules have this black insulation sponge that I guess would eliminate any kind of outside light going inside the optics. It was super easy to remove since it was being held with weak glue. Now you can see clearly where the optics module connect with the metal frame. There is also focus adjustment mechanism which I don't think I've talked about it yet. Under all of these flags you can also see the display connectors. Just by seeing how many traces those have I can safely guess that those are super high def. Ok, so let's remove the optics now. The modules are secured with regular screws, but it takes some effort to remove them since there is thread locker on them. I've removed the small screws, but it seems that there is some kind of epoxy as well. At first I thought it was glue, but it's super hard and it breaks down like epoxy. I carefully removed all of that crap and I can finally detach the optics. Display ribbon is hidden behind this flimsy black tape. As you can see, the trace work on this thing is amazing. There is no way I could replicate something like this. There are of course some more screws to remove. This part is super delicate, since it involves both optics and display, which can be easily scratched. I'm being as careful as I can be right now. Here you can see the barefoot optics without any additional stuff. I would say it's pretty well made, it's super easy in build and it works very well with any kind of display. I could definitely make something cool with this one. Now let's take a look at the display module. It's very similar to the Rocket Max one. It's basically a display with lens on top with some additional aluminum frame. There is also a small knob right here which adjusts the focus. You basically turn it clockwise or counterclockwise and the magnifier slides up and down. I've turned the knob all the way which basically released the whole display module. You can see some additional flex adapters connected to the display which would mean that the display is pretty much off the shelf component. It was very hard to do, but I actually managed to remove the display. The magnifier is glued to the display quite heavily. I guess it would be pretty difficult to detach it from the display. With the help of the off-screen magic, I've managed to separate both pieces. The magnifier piece is a super simple plano convex lens. I don't know the exact details, but it seems you can buy it quite easily. The display module looks like some variation of the Sony ACX display. Thankfully the aluminum frame can be easily removed. The aluminum frame acted also as a heatsink for the display, so there is some thermal paste for us to clean off. I've removed all of the thermal paste and you can now see clearly what model it is. The display module is the Sony ECX 348E. You can easily buy that on some AliExpress listings. I carefully package all of my parts, in case I will use them in my future project. And that would be the end of this video. Thanks for watching everyone and I hope you can learn something from this. Thanks again and see you in the next one.